afraid of the monster by my side. He wants to be your friend, and he's really oh so kind. He's learning about the human world and how to get along. So join right in and sing along with me in the Boink Show song. He's Boink. Hey, Boink. Kindness is his way. He's Boink. Hey, Boink. He's got something to say. He's Boink. Hey, Boink. It's time to start. Welcome, Welcome to the Boink, to the Boink Show. Show. Hi, I'm your host, Boink, with my co-hosts, as usual, Avery. Hi, Avery. And Caitlin. And we have a guest. Caitlin, will you introduce our guest? Or Avery? Who is, who's our guest? The Story Lady. The Story Lady! Hello! Yes, some people may know the Story Lady because she reads her stories at the libraries and some places like that. Welcome! Thanks Thank for you. Thanks for being part of the show. Thank you for having me, Boink. Oh, that's great. We love stories. Yeah, we love to read stories at night before bed and all that stuff. But how do you become the story lady? You obviously read a lot of stories. Do you write them too? Absolutely, Boink. I write stories, and you know what? What? I often write them in the middle of the night. Oh, in the middle of the night? Yes. You're a night owl. I am. Oh, well, that's cool. So then you get to sleep in in the morning, maybe. Well, sometimes. Sometimes. Well, uh, girls, do you have any questions for the story lady? Um, yes. Caitlin? How do you come up with your stories? Mm -hmm. Good question. That is a great store question. Yeah. Well, oftentimes I visit with kids mm -hmm. and we talk a lot and they ask great questions and it gives me ideas about what to write about. Mm -hmm. One time I was traveling to Lincoln, Nebraska Ooh. to visit family and I passed the street, and it was Buckingham. And that I, was the name of the street? That was the name of the street, okay. Buckingham. That's kind of fun to say, Buckingham. And I thought, oh my goodness, wouldn't it be a great idea to write a book about a horse who wanted to tap dance rather than to buck at a rodeo? <laughs> and so I came up Maybe with Mr. Buckingham. Wonderful. Well, man, that's quite an imagination you have. And we should, we should say, too, we didn't say that you write children's books specifically, right? Yep, I yeah. write children's books. Is that all you write books. is children's books? It's all children's books? Yep, it's all children's Lovely. books. Lovely. What, what other questions do we have for you? Um, how many books have you written? How many, how many have you written? Yeah. Great question. Well, I've written about 40 children's books, but I have two books published that are in oh. the stores where you can buy them. Oh, publish. That's actually our word of the day. Let's say word of the day. Word, word of, of the day. day. Yeah, we always like to learn new words. And today's new word is publish, which is perfect because you just talked about publishing. What is publishing? Well, publishing means that you've written a book or you've written some words on a paper and you put them all together to tell a story. Wow. And then you call around or you might write letters to publishing companies and those are the folks that will tell you whether they want to put the words on a book and make some pictures and put them in stores or maybe online. Wow, okay. And if they decide that they'd like to have you mm -hmm. to write yeah. and to publish with them, then they take your idea mm -hmm. and they put it in a book and they put it in the stores or online or or in the libraries they or in libraries. Books from the library. Very good point. That's how point. A, that's how a paper book gets in your hands. Mm -hmm. Someone like Story Lady writes the book and gets it published. Did you know that, girls? Or did you just think books just showed up magically in the library? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're made by these very special creative people like Story Lady. Yeah, we love it. Any other questions for Story Lady? Um, why do you love stories? Ooh, yeah. Why, what, what is so magical about stories and storytelling? So, during the day I work, and in the evening I look forward to coming home and being creative and being able to come up with a place where it's like a fantasy world. And it's just fantastic to be able to think of new creative things 
and write them down. And that's what I really enjoy the most. And then the second thing that I really enjoy is having opportunities like this to talk to young kids about what I do. And so that just gives me the greatest joy to be able to do that. Yeah, and that's it's, why it's I love wonderful. it so much. Yeah, Caitlin, what do you love about stories? You read a lot. Both of you do, Kate, Avery, too. What, what is, what's so magical about stories? It just takes you someplace or what? Well, I, I really like different, uh, I like stories without pictures so you can imagine um, what the characters look like instead of looking at a picture and seeing what the, how the author imagines them. Oh. Yeah, you're talking about some advanced books too, but some children's books have, have illustrations which can be really fun, but then when you get to another level of reading, you, you can use your own imagination. Mm -hmm. What do you love about reading, Avery? Um, I like having pictures so we know what the characters look like. Yeah, sometimes it's probably even hard to imagine what something might look like, and the, and the magic is in the illustrations and the words, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And also, um, I, I like books um, that are um, maybe fantasy, uh, or um, and a nonfiction kind of books because yeah. um, then um, it they can give you ideas for um, um, like making up um, your own um, creature kind of creatures um, that I I make some sometimes like. Um, so some of the, sometimes the yeah. stories inspire you to, to yes. make up your own books and more, your own stories? Yeah. Um, oh, that's really cool. Um, uh, so far, um, I, I made this planet called Biotech Art, and it's filled of all the different animals that I, that I aim up with. Whoa. Uh, Sorry, how, Lady, I think we have a future author on our hands. I think we do. Could I ask you a question about your, your book? How did you come up with the animals that you decided to write about? Um, so I, I thought of different animals that I liked and I, um, and sometimes plants too. Oh. And then I mixed them all up into like one. Um, my favorite that, um, I think it was my first one that I made. It's, um, called a, a tacat and it's like, a tacat? Uh, yep. It's, it's like a, um, a normal cat, but it, it mimics a plant. So cool. like its tail is like a big bush. Wow. And it hides behind it um, when there's like predators near. Caitlin, so. I can't wait to read your, your first book. <laughs> That'll be so much fun. Well, um, we, we want to thank uh, the story lady for, for being interviewed here on the show, but you know, I would really love to hear some of your stories on the regular. Do you think you could read us some stories for, on the show here? You know what, Boink? I would love to oh, read yes. stories. Awesome. Well, before we go to you telling some stories, let's uh, let's do a joke of the day. Caitlin, do you have a joke of the day? Yes. Okay, so let's say joke of the day. Joke, joke of, of the day! day! All right, what's your joke? Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Spell. Spell who? Okay, H-W-O. H-W-O. <laughs> you mean W-H-O? <laughs> <laughs> Called you on that one. Do you have any other jokes? Um, I love your knock-knock jokes, Caitlin. Yes. Um, knock knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Candace. Candace, Candace who? who? Candace door open. <laughs> <laughs> Candace door open. I love it. Well, again, girls, can you say thank you to Story Lady? Thank you. You're I'm welcome. Glad. We're gonna, we want to keep you around. Uh, let's hear some stories from you, okay? I would love to. Okay. Here's a good winter tip. Never catch snowflakes on your tongue until all the birds have flown south. What has four wheels and flies? A garbage truck. Hi everybody! It's me, Boink, and I'm here with Gemma. Hi Gemma. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Good. Do you have a joke for me today? Yeah. What is it? Go ahead. Knock, knock. Well, who's there? Cow. Cow who? Boo hoo. Uh. <laughs> oh, I love those kinds of jokes. They just catch you off guard. 
Mr. Cuttycoat and the Sheep. Mr. Cuttycoat herded his sheep for almost a decade, although he was an artist and a sheepdog by trade. Three foot tall with just a few fleas, Mr. Cuttycoat was a great Pyrenees. Every day he protected his precious flock because he was trained to guard his livestock. His overalls and plaid shirt were tattered and torn. He loved the land where he was born. He dreamed of having farm animals of every color, shape, and size. So he hung a sign with some sticky tape. He used bright colors and big letters he had to trace. He was careful to write in capital letters, and he used double space. The sign was as beautiful as beautiful could be, and he decided that the haircuts would be cost free. Come one, come all, every hairstyle is free. And in small letters he wrote, you never know what you'll turn out to be. All the sheep came to get a haircut or a trim, but they had no idea what Mr. Cuttycoat had planned to do to them. During the summer, the herd seemed to be ignored, but in the winter, the wool was something everyone could afford. Mr. Cuttycoat was sure that haircuts were a must, and he insisted that he was a barber everyone could trust. It was a cold winter in Nebraska, and all was well, when something special arrived in the mail. Mr. Woolley decided to make the trip by foot, but his haircut would kabang, kabosh, and kaput. When he looked in the mirror, he was very surprised that there were black circles around both of his eyes. Clara was sure she'd get a hairstyle she liked, but Mr. Cuttycoat left her hair shaved, gelled, and spiked. Nora was happy to be first in line, but suddenly she looked like a porcupine. Mr. Cuttycoat reached into his pocket and pulled out a written note, and soon Grady was painted blue and sheared into a billy goat. Parsnip had gone missing for about a year, and soon Mr. Cuttycoat had a brand new reindeer. Mary Pat Dustball shouted, this must be illegal, because her hairstyle was just like a beagle's. Sammy was speechless for quite a while because he couldn't figure out if he was a sheep or a cow. Soon the factory was filled with wool from the floor to the ceiling, but the customers were not sure how they were feeling. Although the factory was filled with wool knee deep, no one knew that the farm animals were really shearing sheep. Hi everybody, it's Allison Cromie here, and today we're gonna sing about my best friend. Do you have a best friend? My best friend is a dinosaur. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. Big and green and oh so kind, you can ride on her back and she won't mind. She's my best friend as you can see, so come on a ride with me. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. 
We went downtown so we could see all the busy people working in the big city. They'd stop and stare at the two of us riding on the city bus. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. We went to the park one afternoon as we swung on the swings we hummed this tune. All my friends they came to see la la the dino and me. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. Every night when we go to bed, she lays on my pillow right next to my head. She gives me a kiss and hugs me tight, then she bids me a sweet good night. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. La la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur, la la the dinosaur is my friend. Thanks for watching today's show. Yeah, everybody, we really appreciate it. Now, if you love this episode and you'd like to attend a show taping or send us a video of yourself telling a joke, we'll use it in our next show. Just uh, let your mommy or daddy know and contact us at imboink.com or at the city of Egan, Egan TV. And uh, we've got the website up right there in the email address. But uh, we just want to let you know we want you to be part of the show too, right, Caitlin? Yes. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Boy, that sure sounds good.